Hey Switchers, how's it going? Kanan here and welcome to my review of Hero U Rogue to Redemption. <laughs> you see what they did there, eh? A kind of RPG adventure action with a bit of puzzling in there as well for you. But I ask you, is it enough to make it onto the Wall of Fame? Dun dun dun, or the Wall of Shame? Bum bum bum, or in between? And don't you forget to get yourselves over to the community Discord where you can get your voice heard, literally, by joining in our live streams, all voiced and maybe even doing your own community review. Link below. And so let's grab our lockpicks and don one of those silly little cloaks that they always wear and get ourselves into the game. In gameplay. Okay, so without boring everyone because there's a lot in this game that you need to kind of know and a lot that you'll figure out on your own. The story is by Laurie and Corey Cole, the creators of the acclaimed Quest for Glory series, or at least it says here anyway. And it's a story and obviously a character driven game. The short end of it, without spoiling too much, is the fact that you get caught stealing and enrolled into a Heroes Guild type thing. Failing to be able to become a wizard or anything, you get cast into the role of Rogue. Lovable Rogue. Or a thief, as it were. So, kind of got what you wanted, really. And so your adventure begins. So let's delve into character mechanics, shall we? Which basically you have your character, and then you've got your status, health and everything. And then abilities, which you can put up by actually doing things inside the guild. And there's several rooms that you can go and hone your actual abilities, like tight roping and throwing daggers combat, sneaking, darts, you can even play like cards in this game and earn money for doing so, which is pretty cool. And said money can be spent on different items to help you through the game. Whilst you're actually going, you can gain reputation with different characters and you can even fall in love. Ah, Valentine's is just round the corner as well. Then you have your inventory, which I feel is self-explanatory, so I'm not going to explain it. And the same with your equipment, kind of obvious with a few little twists here and there, but nothing that you won't pick up yourself. Now your journal on the other hand, now that tells you plenty of things like the things that you need to be doing, how your days are going, and kind of what you've achieved. And so the whole game is made up on days and there's 50 days in a whole, well, game really. And just quickly you move around by pointing your pointer anywhere on screen, clicking it and you'll move there. This feels okay, but I wish there was like a controller so I can just move my character where I actually want it to go. Clicking on most items brings up a menu that basically says you can open this door, listen in, use your lockpicks when you get them, or pick up item, interact with an item, use an item on something to interact with it. And then you have a run, walk and sneak eventually button as well. Still with me? Great stuff. Okay, so each day is split up into sections. So you first got your lesson, and then from there you get tasks that you can go and like, you know, hone your skills and everything. And then you got dinner time, and then after that you can go and do other tasks or honing other abilities. I will say that the first half of the game is kind of a bit of a grind because you know, all you'll be doing is just coming out of lessons, honing your skills, going to the canteen, eating, and then going to hone more skills. The only thing that was kind of like annoying on this was the fact that if you're on one end of the school or guild and you have to go and eat, you have to go all the way up some stairs, all the way to the actual guild canteen. And then once you've done there, if you need to go all the way back, you have to run all the way back. And it's kind of slow and almost grindy to a certain extent. I mean, it doesn't ruin it completely. It kind of mars it ever so slightly though. The combat is all turn based where you get to use items if you've got them or throw in knives or whatever else you've unlocked or have upon your body. It's worth noting that if you die you go back to hospital, I've only done this once but there doesn't seem to be any permadeath within this which is just as well because I'd hate to go all the way back to the beginning to come all the way back here again. The whole game seems to have a good sense of humour and the characters seem to be well fleshed out as well. In fact, every time you climb these stairs, I think the actual writers knew that you'll be doing it a lot. So every time you do it, they have like a really interesting and funny quip for you. It did seem to have a little bit of a cutscene shadow whenever there was like cutscenes like at the beginning. 
none of this again really marred the experience at all. The graphics, well, these kind of like took me back to when I was younger. Yes, they're very retro and all that lot, but they seemed quite nicely put together and they did what well, I would have thought that this sort of game or genre would actually offer up of the type that it actually is. As for the sound, well, that was really disappointing. There was barely any of it. I mean, yeah, sure, there was like when you lot picked, it was like t -t 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 and all that lot of noises and there was a bit of music and things like that. But as a whole, it just wasn't really doing anything. The good. Well, I enjoyed the story. I enjoyed the characters and the fact they were fleshed out. And I did actually like the style. The bad. That whole first part of it, the pacing was just really, really grindy. And I didn't really enjoy it as much as the rest of the game. And those sounds just took me out of the game. The fact that there was just points that were sparse. It was weird. The score, well, as you can guess, I actually enjoyed the game, although probably someone that really likes this genre would score it a 4 out of 5. I'm going to score it a 3 out of 5. It was enjoyable. It's kind of like a middle of the road average game, which I think most people can get some enjoyment out of. My alternate game for this, once you've completed it, would have to be the Deponia series. Mostly all of them are pretty good, so I hear. I've not actually played them, but they look this kind of thing, but more of a modern day like twist to them and everything if you get to the app shop before the 27th of the 2nd 2021 then you'll have a hefty 90% off mostly all of them which is like £35 down to £3 something which is awesome they all seem voiced and really really well animated and everything so yeah well worth getting I hear so leave a comment down below if you want. Thank you for joining. Don't forget to join us in Discord. Link below where we do community reviews and also community streams where you can have your say because your voice matters. Because life is better when we switch together.